Welcome to Carrick House Farm. I'm the fourth generation to farm here. Farm was bought by, by my great grandfather in the early 1900s. The farm is situated um, in South Down, about um, just south, south of Rock Richmond. We're at a relatively low rainfall area here, um, averaging about 750 mils per annum. That does mean that during the summer we quite often run into periods of drought. The farm is situated at about 100 metres from sea level rather rising to about um, 120 or 130 metres at the highest. The farm is largely in one block with a few small outlying pieces. We're currently farming uh, 315 acres. That, that farm size was increased over the last number of years of taking in um, extra corn acres has become available. We're standing at the back of the milking parlour. It's a 20 point swing over. We milk twice a day, but I don't do an awful lot of the milking. My, I have a full-time employee who does most of the morning milkings with, some, with my help at times. And I have a, also have a relief milker who does all evening milkings on Saturday morning. Um, fertilizer application this year was, was the same as normal. We didn't cut back for we need to grow as much high quality silage and grass as we can to reduce the amount of meal required. Um, particularly during the winter period. Um, the, the, um, the slurry on the farms, um, we always optimise our use of it and in recent years we have been using low emission slurry spreading, so dribble bar, um, and that's done for all cuts. It's done with umbilicals, so we don't put tankers onto the field, um, and um, we have all our slurry goes onto the side of the ground, um, a bit, some spread before each cut. Grass is measured um, weekly through the, the, the grazing season so that I can keep on top of um, grass growth and know where, uh, whether I have any surpluses or deficits occurring in the grass wedge. We also pre-mow from early May, so from in the third rotation, um, through um, that peak growth period um, into June and July and when we get into August I, I stop pre-mowing again. We've invested heavily on the grazing infrastructure in this farm over the years um, and something's ongoing. We have um, an, 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 a network of cow tracks and we have multiple trickers in all of the, all of the paddocks to ensure that we can get cows to grass for as much of the grazing season as possible. It's key to the profitability of this business. The cows are grazed on a three week basis but that is generally shortened um, mid season when grass growth is really strong. In wintertime cows are fed three times a week. Lots of silage are set in on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And then the machines are parked. And unless I've made a mistake in my calculations, um, there's no machinery used at the weekend. There's no doubt feeder in the farm and cows are fed on a computerized feed to use system, either through the parlor or in the outer parlor feeders. Currently 200 cows, we're averaging about 9,700 litres, um, 4.1%. On fat and 3.4% protein. It's a high PLI based herd um, and what's grass based, which is, is unusual. Um, cows are in grass in early March and our grass uh, right through until October and sometimes in uh, good weather conditions or wet ground conditions in November. Um, the calving pattern is also slightly like unusual that we calve in the summer and autumn, um, starting in June with all, all calving finished before the end of November, meaning that we plan to have no calves on the time by Christmas time. In 2018, I became one of the 10 Dairy for Future project farmers in Northern Ireland. Um, the group was set up with the aim of increasing um, resilience and sustainability and competitiveness um, in dairy farmers in the Atlantic region of, of Europe. Joining the Dairy for Future Group has allowed me to meet with like-minded and progressive dairy farmers who wish to develop their business in making them both economically and environmentally sustainable. We also had the opportunity to travel to northwestern France where we met dairy farmers who were with systems not dissimilar to my own, um, with hygienic milk cows on, on a grass-based system and many of those dairy farmers had their cows at grass for a reasonable part of the grazing season. Thank you.